Welcome everyone to Bridge the Data Gap, CT Data's 10th annual conference. I'm thrilled to see you all in person in front of me instead of on a computer screen with a little name in front of uh, your face. So it's so great to see you all in person. Uh, who has been to a CT Data conference before in person? Please raise your hands. All right, and who is this your first time coming to an in-person CD data conference? Wow, that is incredible. Well, welcome to everybody. Welcome. When we scheduled this conference, we could not have anticipated the response. Take a look around you. You are in the company of 200 people who care about creating a state where data is used to help everyone thrive. Over half of you, slide, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Over half of you work in not-for-profit organizations. About a quarter are from state agencies with folks from higher ed, philanthropy, media, and more in this room. We have folks working in health industry and public health, people who support victims of human trafficking, folks who work for children's well-being, folks working on housing access and housing rights, and so much more. I hope you'll learn about who else is in the room as you go about your day. The power of today is that we are coming together to hear new ideas, maybe even some challenging ideas, and to build new relationships. Who knows, maybe you will find a partner in this room that cares about a data gap that you also care about. We hope that by bringing everyone together in a space where we can openly share ideas and challenge the norm, that we can innovate and create better, more equitable data systems together. The conference theme for this year is Bridge the Data Gaps. Bridges are meant to get us someplace. When we stand on the edge of the Grand Canyon, I can't imagine ever anybody has ever said, wow, those bridge makers left a lot of gaps. Because the point of the Grand Canyon is not to get us someplace. A gap in a bridge, however, is a problem because it's gonna hamper travel from one place to another. But data gaps are not important because we need all the data. Data gaps only matter when we are trying to get from one place today to another, the future. And when those gaps keep us from knowing how we're doing or how we're gonna get from here to there. At CT Data, we frequently come across data gaps, as I'm sure you all do as well. We've been fortunate to collaborate with partners to try to address some of these gaps, and many of you are actually in this room today. Together, we've attempted to answer some important questions, but encountered missing data. These questions include, who are the people being most impacted by evictions? How many youth in Hartford are being served by youth-serving organizations? How many black-owned businesses started at the beginning of the pandemic and are still operating today? What has been the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on children and child care providers in Hartford? What are the data gaps that are keeping you from answering some of your most important questions? That is the question I want you to keep in mind today. What data gaps are keeping us from a future where everyone in Connecticut can thrive? What data gaps are keeping us from knowing where the problems are today? How can we fill those gaps? Data gaps are a fact of life. Life would be cumbersome if we tried to eliminate all the data gaps, and it's a world most of us would not care for. Many of the data gaps we care about relate to challenges in our state or society, and so, inevitably, much of the data we care about is collected from people who are already over-surveilled, those living in poverty, those who are racialized as people of color. This is why we must approach these gaps thoughtfully and in relationship. Many of us view data not as an end in itself, but as a means to create a thriving Connecticut where racial and other disparities are eliminated. Data alone cannot tell us where to go. We must listen and act on the voices of those represented in the data to determine what path to take. And research may be, need, may be needed to determine the best course of action. By bridging the data gaps to understand where we are starting from, we increase our likelihood of reaching our desired future. There are many reasons why data gaps exist. Sometimes it is because we're trying to avoid harming the people who would provide the data. But there are other reasons as well. The difficulty of collecting the data we need. Not everything we want to know has a process point where information could easily be collected. These gaps could require many resources due to their complexity. Poor planning. 
Sometimes we just don't know how to plan to collect the information we need and only realize when it's too late that we aren't collecting what we need to. Protecting ourselves or others. Sometimes we or others in power are worried that if the data gets out, someone will lose their job or we will lose our funding. We sometimes are more concerned about our own situation than about the pain that is being caused by something not working as it should. Weak relationships with those who have information that we feel we need. Strong relationships with people in the data will help us understand what we need to do in order to be a trustworthy organization or institution. And not realizing that the data is out there already and that we just haven't found it yet. Maybe the best kind of gap. Regardless of the reason, bridging data gaps is not simply a technical problem. We can't always just change a form, update a database field, or create a survey. Data gaps require relationships to understand why the gaps have been allowed to exist, assess whether the gaps should be filled, and determine what is the best way to fill them. That is why we are here today. I'm going to leave you with some questions to think about as you hear from our panelists and speakers today. Where are you going? What kind of data can help you get there? And what gaps exist in those data? What has been the impact of those data gaps on addressing the problems that you care about? What is one step you can take to find out whether those gaps should be filled or how to fill them? And what data gaps have you helped to fill? Speaking of the panelists and the speakers, we are thrilled at the lineup and pa of panelists and plenary speakers who have agreed to share their knowledge with us today. We have about 35 experts who will be speaking on topics that will highlight existing data gaps and give ideas for how to fill them. I would also like to thank the 25 sponsors of today's conference. Please give a round of applause to the organizations that supported us to bring this conference free of charge so that we could all learn and connect in our shared mission to build, to bridge data gaps. And we'd especially like to thank Novus Insight, a technology and data services company headquartered in East Hartford, who focuses on nonprofits, local government, and K-12 schools. They're here today to highlight their data platform, AltruLink, which is designed to help organizations with data collection, integration, workflow, workflow automation, and reporting challenges. Please stop and talk to them in the hallway if at the table in the hallway if any of that sounds like something that you need. <laughs>